Hey everybody, this is Davis over at the CFG and I'd like to welcome you, welcome you to another episode of Pop Culture Gems. This is a series where we talk to amazing creators, artists, cosplayers, voice actors, and so much more. If you like the interviews we, like we do with these amazing guests, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel, the CFG channel, or you can either go to our main website, cottonfreaksandgeeks.com, or listen to it on any podcast services out there. Today... I am with an awesome voiceover, uh, voiceover actor, or I'm sorry, voice actor, geez, who has been in the crazy fun games like the announcer from Smash Brothers 4 and Ultimate, Toga Inumaki and Ao to Toto in the Jujutsu Kaisen in a series, Kogoro Mori in the Detective Conan series, but you remember him as the protagonist, aka Ren Amamiya aka joker from the persona 5 games and anime i would like to welcome xander mobis to the show how are you doing sir i'm doing good there is no way in hell i'm matching your energy that just like you just kicked it up to 11 like we were talking before the podcast and it was like a steady five about where i'm at and then just it goes in and holy crap <laughs> man like but you gotta you gotta catch you have to catch the people you know you have one time impression and then after that <laughs> after that it's like oh okay this, we gotta find out what this how, how energetic this podcast is so that's what i've learned <laughs> hey, listen, oh by the way i i should have asked before am i allowed to swear on here or is this like family friendly keep it clean oh uh, yeah sure you can you, you can swear i'll okay. try not to swear a lot but i mean you can swear not like okay uh, on the deal but uh it's all good yeah, yeah i'm, I'm it's, just it's, never it's, sure you know no no i definitely under i definitely understand but uh no but welcome i really appreciate you doing this, this is, it's really cool yeah man good to be here all right awesome well like i said let's just get this party started uh like what is your story mm -hmm. what made you want to become a voice actor well in some ways i was born to become a voice actor um you know man uh, i i think it just uh uh i think like all actors i just have a deep need for external validation um so i was kind of drawn to the arts very early in life um i you know like i i i can do math and like science eh, like i have no useful skills right so it's like okay the arts are like what appeals to me what interests me um, and when I was younger, I tried a bunch of different stuff and I found acting when I was a teenager. Um, and I, I would do like voiceovers in like, uh, like, do you remember newgrounds.com? Oh God. Yes. Yeah. So I do voiceovers for that kind of stuff. And, uh, I was doing theater. Um, and it, I, the thing that draws me to voiceover is sort of, uh, it, it's sort of complex, I guess. Uh, well, eh, not really. I don't want to make myself sound deeper than I am. Uh, I'm a huge Dorcas, you know, like I watch cartoons and anime and like I, I play video games. Like I consume the content in the mediums that I work in. Uh, not necessarily the stuff I'm in all the time, but like, you know, just I like that stuff. So that was appealing. And the other thing is... Look, man, I uh, did theater for a while and I was always more drawn to character acting than uh, anything else. And, you know, when you're 19 and uh, nobody needs a 19 year old character actor in theater, like it's just most of the character roles are written for older dudes. Right. And like I was never going to be the leading man, you know, like my face sucks. Uh so you really put yourself down a lot <laughs> your own backstory man i mean <laughs> i mean it, i mean i understand but it's like it's like wow you're really <laughs> uh, like yourself no let yourself I, mean, have it. I i think it's just you got to be realistic about like especially if you're planning to make a career out of it you know like i i know for a fact that if i were to go and audition for lead parts i would be going up against supermodels right in in live action uh okay you know, and it's like, that's just not me. And th those aren't even really the roles that interest me. And like all my favorite actors are like, you know, Tim Curry, Vincent Price, uh, Corey Burton on the voiceover end. Like they're the people who have such wide range and can really sink their teeth into anything, any material you give them. Um, I mean, so for me, that was always more appealing. And voiceover is perfect for that because I can play anything as long as I can act it. 
it's very freeing and liberating and it's nice not having to have the crippling anxiety like look i don't want to i don't want to shit on live action people or 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 theater people because i met plenty of them who are very nice but there is a deep insecurity when you walk into an audition room uh with uh with live action people or with um with uh theater people a lot of the time because it's you know they are being professionally judged on their looks on like, you can get disqualified for being an inch too short. You know what I mean? Like it is brutal and it's not, Mm -hmm. I, I personally feel like that can't be healthy for the psyche. And I think that's why there's that insecurity that happens when you go into uh, those rooms. Whereas you go into a room for a a voiceover audition and everybody's chill. Everyone's just like, yeah, we're going to go in, do our best. And that's it. You know? Um, (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And I think it's because we know we are going to be judged on our acting, uh, which is the craft. That's what we fell in love with. That's what we like doing. And I feel like voiceover is the freest medium for that. Um, I think I answered your question, or maybe I just like shit on a bunch of people accidentally. (laughs) It's like, here's everyone on my list. (laughs) No, 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 you're good. Uh, But like the, well, the biggest thing though, like, so, I mean, have you always thought like, I mean, I mean, I understand like you're talking like, uh, and it makes sense to me. I mean, when you're saying voice it, like you're not really depending on your look itself when you're going into an audition and everything, but like, like, uh, and you definitely loved, you were definitely in the scenes with like, you know, cartoons and, and everything and, uh, else like that. But was there, was there something where it was just like, when you were interested in acting in the teenage age, like you it just decided, you just, you just decided, oh, wow. I mean, look at this, look at this way of doing it. I will enjoy what I like to do without worrying about all that. Oh or, yeah. Like, no. Like- once you do like, I mean, again, even on like new grounds, you do one cartoon and it was like, once you get that first hit, you are addicted for life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it, it is, it, it is crack. It is just like, Oh my God, I get to play this thing and this thing at the same time and all. And, and you know, I can be anybody. And then it comes out and it's it, the first time you see, your voice coming out of an animated character, it is a surreal experience and it's an amazing mm. experience. Um, yeah, no, once you get that first hit, you're hooked. And like, I, I never wanted to do anything else after that. I also theater pays like crap. So, and again, I don't particularly want to do on camera because that is again, like I, it's just, it's a world that I feel like get can, I'll say can because I don't want to imply that like it's all doom and gloom. And I certainly don't have the experience in the on-camera industry to like talk with any authority about it. But from the limited experience I do have, I feel like at least for me, that would be a very unhealthy environment. Oh, okay. Well, no, that's cool. That makes sense. And uh, and like you're saying, you're into the uh, like uh, in the cartoons and stuff. Like, what series did you watch growing up that made you want to pursue? You know. Oh, like, Jesus. you know, this, uh, this seriously, like how, Boy, how much of a, how of much a cartoon, time, how much you? time you got, <laughs> uh, uh, we got, we got all the time. <laughs> I'm also, well, so I'm also a big comic book guy. So like, you know, oh, it, really? okay, it, like cool. one of my dream roles would be nightcrawler from the X-Men, you know? Um, uh, yeah, like X-Men, the animated series, Spider-Man, the animated series, Batman, the animated, I mean, I feel like everybody saw Batman, the animated series and like, even as kids, you know, you kind of like realize like, this is something really special. Like this is a bunch of artists just hitting it out of the park again and again on every episode. And like the writing team is just on it and they're making all these calls that like, I have to imagine they would be risky at that time. Like, you know, they set it in this weird future past world where where it's like, and they just said, well, we wanted it to be timeless, but like just that choice gives the series so much like texture and, and awesomeness. And the art was always incredible. And like, yeah, like it's, it's a, no, no Batman is like, is, is literally the, one of the perfect animates. Oh yeah. I've ever, I mean, totally right. Avatar The Last Airbender, like you, you Mm -hmm. experience that story and you're like, I want to be a part of storytelling like this. Uh, Mm -hmm. On the video game side of things, I remember like Mass Effect blew my mind, you know, Mm. like it was just like, this can like, 
you can be a part of stories like this. Um, and like, I, I, I don't know. It's just, it, it's so amazing feeling like you're a part of, of a story that's really worth telling. Um, and that's like, again, it's, it's that, it's that crack. It's that you get a hit of it. And you're like, man, I want to do this forever. Oh, you definitely seem like uh storytelling is very important to you when it comes to, when it comes to like, you know, the, like when you're watching a series and, and yeah. gaming and stuff. So, so I'm assuming RPGs and things like that. Oh yeah. Uh, as well. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, I, oh my God. Wait, so I played persona four in high school, um, which mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, dating myself horribly here but uh yeah i played persona 4 in high school and i just fell in love with it you know like i don't think i'd ever experienced a game where it just felt so and you know you see anime and jrpgs with like teenage protagonists and all that stuff so much but like finding persona 4 when you're in high school you just feel seen in a way that like you know what i mean because they capture like all the little nuances of of adolescence and growing up and the insecurities and all of that and they explore it in a way that it never it never goes cheap it always uh it it always like tries to remain really honest and so i fell in love with that game so then when when val our director i was in for another video game and she was like hey so we'll see you back for persona 5 and i just went excuse me (laughs) <laughs> and she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, can, can I ask who I am? And she was like, oh, yeah, uh, you're, you're going to be playing uh, the protagonist. Um, so, you know, not the most lines, but and I was just like, no, no, shh, shh, shh. thank you. <laughs> I, I, I left the room. And like, as soon as I was out of sight, I jumped in the air and did a heel click. Like, it, I was so excited. Did you even audition for it or did, he, did they just they no. gave it to you? That's right. So wow. what, what had happened was uh, I had worked with the Atlas guys on a game called Shimigami Tensei 4 Apocalypse. Where mm-hmm. I played Dogda, who's the Celtic god of, I don't know, he's like Celtic Odin, basically. Except in this game, he's got massive mommy issues. So he's like, <laughs> no, mom, I'm not going to clean my room. Why don't you just understand me? Um. So, and that had been at the same studio. So when they were casting Persona 5, my demo reel got pitched uh, for Joker and they picked me based off that. Oh, that's awesome. That, that's like the best, that's the best kind of jobs in itself. It's like, oh, right. It's yeah. like, I don't have to do, <laughs> thank you very much. I will take the paycheck. I will take being a part of a series that has meant so much to me. What? It's even, yeah. I'm I, like, I'm obviously biased, but you know, playing it, I was like, oh my God, they managed to top P4. God, yeah, they really damn. did. Like I, I have to say, like Persona Five is one of my favorites as well, and like, and like, and you, and you know what's crazy? Because like, I don't like personally, I don't like DLCs, like you know, like additionals or or like when they when they re-release a game, and because like once I played the story and then I'm done, right? But like Persona, yeah, Persona Five though was one of the very few that I was like, I platinum the first one. Then I platinum P five R when it came back out again. <laughs> when oh, it came man. back out again, and I was like, "This game is just amazingly fun." Just like overall, like Persona's world is just ooh. Honestly, it's like great. One of the things that gets me every time is my brother will like text me when he's playing a game that I'm in, and like or like if he's watching a show that I'm in, and he'll just be like, "Man." You sound really good, and I really love this thing. And every time, it just like, oh, my little heart melts, you know. No, oh, yeah, oh, you definitely, you de- you definitely bring it, man. Like I, I will definitely say say that. Oh, uh, but thank like, you. yeah, yeah. And the uh, the one, and there's another series that I think that you, I, I don't know if you uh, were uh, were you in this. I think it was Tra- Trails of Cold Steel is a yeah. good one too for me. <laughs> my, uh, yeah, uh, my brother keeps pitching me uh, a pod because he's played all of them, and he's like, he keeps pitching me like, "Hey, we should do a podcast where like based because I only know the scenes I did. I've never played them." So yeah. he's like, "I want you to like describe what you think the Trail series is about based solely on your experience in the booth." And I'm like, "I'm not doing <laughs> that. I'm not doing that, my dude." <laughs> that would be a very interesting part. <laughs> like you just you have no you have no frame of reference of what's I, going on. It's I like, <laughs> know how dense those games are. Our client on uh-huh. that um 
she uh, she wrote the scripts and she was also our client in the room. She's a friend of mine and she she loves that series and she knows it inside and out. So like she'll just start talking about it randomly and like explaining all the deep lore and stuff. And like, I just go blank. I'm like, I can't keep up. I don't. Oh my God. This is so See, much, but that's just, yeah, but that's, that's the problem though, because when you have a series that's rich in story, especially, I mean, trails of cold steel series is for, for like back to back to back to back, uh, games. It's like, yeah. you, then you're trying to introduce someone new to it. That person will be, it will, it doesn't matter what kind of person you are, but they will introduce it to that new individual, like as if it's God's gift to man, you know, but right. they have no idea what it is. You know? I, I have like, to imagine uh, yeah. it's sort of like me explaining one piece to people, right? It's like. Cause like you have to understand, like, I don't know if you're a one piece fan, but you have to understand when you, when you get into one piece and you fall in love mm-hmm. with it, you have to recognize that like you will forever be that guy at the party. Who's the worst and trying to get people to watch one piece and you'll yeah. try to explain it. And it's like, no, you don't understand. So in like episode a thousand, right? Like Kato turns into a dragon and there are all these samurai and they're like, oh, I'm going to get you. And then like the animation goes crazy and there's a cat who's got a pipe and he turns into like a were cat and it's so fucking cool. You know, like, <laughs> and then like, it's like, you know, calm down. you know, everyone's eyes are glazing over and they're wishing you weren't there. But then you find that one other person who either is already right. into it and then you're friends for life. Or you find that one person who's like, you know, that does sound cool. I'll give it a shot. And you know, you just ruined their lives as well. And it's like, oh, oh. yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, yeah, actually, that leads to the next question, because I know you've been focusing on catching up on One Piece itself. Mm-hmm. Like, have you caught up or no, are you, uh, like, where are you at? I've got 16 episodes left and then I'm caught up. Which oh, my God. I've been kind of taking my sweet time on them because I honestly don't know what i'm gonna do once i'm caught up like i started watching (laughs) one piece a decade ago and then skypea really derailed me for a while so i'd like watch maybe like 10 20 episodes a year and i always said like i have to take one piece at my own pace because i know you can get full on these shows you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. dragon ball z i feel like i'm full i'll still go back and like rewatch the frieza saga and i've got a lot of good memories of it but like new stuff comes out and I'm just like, hey, you know, I went to the buffet. I had a great time, but I've eaten enough. Um, right. So I, I was very cognizant of that going into one piece. Uh, the problem with one piece is it just keeps getting better. And I don't know it's pacing. how. Yeah. Well, my problem is because like, it's funny because uh, when I first got into it, uh, well, it's actually kind of crazy to even think, but that too, it's like, the series came two years after the original Final Fantasy was released. So that was 99, which is insane to me to think of. Oh my God. Yeah. Is still running. I know. But, uh, but like, uh, uh, my thing was like, I was kind of when, when I think I got caught, uh, Oh, I was paid. I was bet. Someone betted me to say, hey, can you I bet you can't watch 600 episodes of One Piece because that's when it first came uh, that was out at the time uh, to uh, finish all that in a month or uh, some ridiculous short period of time. And I was like, I have nothing to do. I was like, let's do it. Well, let's <laughs> so, go. I, yeah. Wait, but, I can do the math really quick because I'm on what? A thousand twelve or something like that. Let's let's do this math real quick. All right. Let's say I'm at 1,012. I don't know if that's correct. Then we'll uh, we'll say each episode is 20 minutes roughly because they skip a, or because you know what? Let's do 18 minutes just because a lot of them are pretty heavy on recap. That would yes. be 18,216 minutes. We're going to divide that by 60 to find out how many hours that is. That would be 303.6 hours. Uh, and then let's divide that by 24. That would be uh, nearly 13 days solid of, you know, <laughs> you don't get to shit. You don't get to eat. You don't get to sleep. You're just watching One Piece. Yeah, that's insane to me. I just, My biggest issue with One Piece is it's pacing. I don't think like uh, like like uh uh i'm i'm stuck right now i think i'm stuck at the what's what's her name uh big moms oh the, whole the, cake. yeah whole cake island it's like yeah. my god this thing it takes forever like it's not even just whole mom like you were saying sky pia is also another one of those weird lull spots oh know? yeah no Pro- sky pia is a slog man 
I, yeah, I, I forgive anyone who skips Skype here. I get it. <laughs> yeah, but like, come on, man. But like, even even Ace, even uh, spoilers, but like Ace's execution thing. But oh, yeah, uh, the like, War. because yeah, the Paramount War, like when he literally got off the boat to run at the like at the place where he was going to get killed. Took him 30, 20, 30 episodes just to run at him. Like, oh, like yeah. how far is this thing? <laughs> it's oh like, yeah. What? <laughs> I it's mean, like Jesus. Jimbe literally ca- Jimbe, I this is a tangent before we get back to whole cake, but Jimbe, I love Jimbe and I'm like mm-hmm. I I feel kind of out of place because like my three it's nearly impossible to pick your favorite straw hats. Uh like yeah. Luffy's number 1 just because he's too stupid to lose and I love him. Um <laughs> but like if you have to pick your favorite straw hats beside that, it's so hard, but like Brooke, Zoro and Jimbe, I, and like Frankie is in there too. And I, don't I really I, like Frankie. I think ne- I like Nico. Nico Robin was one of my favorites. Oh, Robin's like, even great. S- They're all so CP9? good. Like, yeah, honestly, like I was watching whole cake when like the Sanji Luffy fight happens and like, Uh you know, they're just tears streaming down my face and I'm like, my children are suffering. (laughs) But Jinbe, I love Jinbe because he is the tank that everybody wishes they had in their D and D campaign. You know what I mean? Like he will fucking carry you to victory in the Paramount Wars case. He literally carried Luffy. (laughs) He really did. <laughs> but like, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, whole cake. It, whole cake is, I like whole cake. I like a lot of things about whole cake Island. Um, and like, if you're a Brook fan, you are eating on whole cake, man. Uh, yeah. and I am a Brook fan. Uh, I love him. He has been making skull jokes for like 800 episodes and I still think they're funny. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, dude, d- have you gotten to the Kata Curry fight yet? Uh, yeah, well, the Katakuri fight was the best thing on Whole Cake. In my, well, I mean, I'm not saying Whole Cake is slow. Well, it is slow, but uh, I'm not saying it's boring. But there's so much that happens on that island. The, yeah. And then uh, I, I'm at the. Um, I decided to start reading because of th- to make it a little bit faster. Oh yeah, but That's uh, probably yeah, a good call. Yeah, yeah, and uh, but like the escape to leave Whole Cake because this is after he defeats Katakuri. Uh, is just like wow. So wait, let me get this straight. So you go on one boat to uh, you while you have to build the cake for a berserk version of Big Mom. Yeah. To to fo- to go to a different island to pick you uh, uh, Luffy up, and uh, and then at the same time try to break the barricade to get out the whole cake. Yeah. Uh, pivot to get out the whole cake. I'm like, good God, this is. Yeah, it's pretty intricate. <laughs> it's it's one know? of those weird things where there's a lot happening technically, but because it's like you only get a little piece of each one every episode, the pacing feels mm-hmm. really slow. Mm-hmm. Um, so I totally get it. The Katakuri fight, I like. I I really like Katakuri. I like that. Oh yeah, him and Luffy kind of become like weird frenemies based on mutual respect over the course of the fight. Um, I love when he's just like, ah, donuts. <laughs> um, like I like Katakuri a lot, but that fight is 16 episodes long, I think. And for 12 oh, yeah. of those, it's just Luffy getting punched being like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to learn how to use the, the, this <laughs> sensing hockey. Yeah. It's like, come on. It's like, you've learned it already. It's, <laughs> it's like, like, yeah, man, this, this could have been a type five guys. <laughs> it's like, come on. It's like, and, it's, and he does the same thing in, um, in, uh, a Wano when he tried to learn the new the new piece that he could do with his uh his hockey and I'm like oh jeez oh, man I- see I'm a, I'm a big apologist for the anime when it gets to Wano especially because the animation like you are guaranteed some nice sakuga basically every episode like that is true every time they go up against Kaido it is just stunningly beautiful and like the effects team is clearly just having a ball making all these like crazy like hockey looks so cool now oh um, it does you're totally right but like 15 years ago it was like what is this Black oh my hands. god this is also like <laughs> off topic but like i finally I, my uh, some friends of mine took me to this arcade last night and i finally learned the trick to this claw machine so mm-hmm. i won a pair of luffy figures one for me one for my friends so i just put him up 
um, and it's gorgeous and I love him and I'm not a figure guy. Like I do not collect, I have a couple of like gunpla, which I excuse because I, I built those and like, and like, I'm not even a big Gundam fan, honestly. Like I've seen a few shows and stuff, but like, uh, you know, Gundam's one of those shows you can go real deep on and I, I just never have, but I really right. do like building gunpla. It's very Zen. It's very meditative. And then you get like a cool toy at the end. So I've got like a couple of those. One of them's Black War Greymon. I want to get all the Digimon ones because I love Digimon. Um, I mean, why not? <laughs> but like it's that. And then like my buddy won me a Eustace kid, which like I felt bad. That was my, oh, like oh. the reason I was determined to get the Luffy is I was like, I can't have Eustace kid be my only one piece figure. <laughs> like I, I like Eustace kid, but. But yeah. he can't be the only one. You know what I mean? He's a, Eustace Kid was the one with the magnet. Like, he's magnet, basically Magneto, right? He's Magneto, but he refuses to do anything but punch people. <laughs> it's like, a, I have an awesome power that is totally OP, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to use it for melee. I'm, I'm waiting <laughs> for Oda to, like, drop a big Eustace Kid moment. Because, like, yeah, I think he's got a lot of potential to do cool stuff, but he hasn't gotten the the traffy treatment where like you know he gets those cool moments he has the opportunity right now i mean he he's kind of a very big part of wano after he got captured by kaido kaido's folks like now like yeah. i would have thought that that would have been his time to shine but then they surprisingly how they pivoted to uh i believe his name is uh was it drake x the one that turns into a dinosaur yeah that's drake yeah 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 or drake yeah so that dude i was like no, you're wow, right okay. it's drake x it's just yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So like, just. Oh yeah, yeah. No doubt. Yeah, but anyway, Matt, like I said, we can talk. You're li- literally right. I mean, we can talk about One Piece literally all day. <laughs> oh <still>. yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll say this. I am waiting for. Um, oh God, why am I spacing on his name? Uh, Basil Hawkins. I'm waiting for that shoe to drop <laughs> because, like, clearly something's up with him, and mm-hmm. like, I like maybe he's going to end up being like a poo, or he's just an asshole, but. I don't know. I I feel like there's something going on there, and people who have read the manga probably already know. But I'm waiting for that. Oh, shit I already drop. know. You talk about the dude that uh, that does the cards and like you know, sees the future and whatever. Yeah, and he's got the, yeah. the voodoo dolls that he like puts in himself, and he can like yeah. Whenever he gets damaged, it somebody else takes it for him. Yeah, that's a little op too. <laughs> yeah, especially <laughs> when he like keeps stretching the definition. It, it's sort of like uh, Do Flamingo, like Dofi. Uh, uh, like it's like okay, he's a string man, got it. But then it's just like he can do just any shit, like you know, like shit where it's like <laughs> okay, like I see the connection to string, but I don't know, man. This is uh, like you're really pulling it. You're literally, literally pulling, pulling, pulling on strings like, like uh, to a point that it's God tier of what your, what your ability can yeah, do. Yeah, like you can it's fly because you wrap strings around clouds. Like I, <laughs> I'll, I'll accept it because we live. Like this is a cartoon world that like has its own logic, but it's a, <laughs> this is, that would be a stretch in any other series. Oh, the grasp of straws there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with Basil Hawkins case, literally, because he's the straw straw man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, I mean, but the fight, the fights of One Piece is great. But then again, it's like, I, I still don't think that their fights compared to the, the Demon Slayer fights and stuff are kind of, you know, like are just insanely beautiful and stuff like yeah. that to, the, yeah. to those levels. So I'm kind of embarrassed to admit because I, I'm in Demon Slayer, but like, oh yeah, no, you played the dude with the arrows, right? Like, yeah, with the like weird, creepy eyeball hands, yeah, and like, yes. uh, Sarah Williams, who's another friend of mine, she played uh, his partner with the the balls, um, the, uh-huh. she, the really heavy balls that she threw, which was mm-hmm. honestly like so amazing because like I I love getting to. My in in my ideal world, uh, I always record last on anime so I can hear everybody else uh, because mm-hmm. it makes acting a lot easier. Because then it's like, okay, I'm reacting, which is what acting is. Um, uh, but like, and she was so perfect for that character. So getting to go in and play off her, like, I texted her immediately afterwards, and I was like, dude, you sound so good, hell yeah! And like, you made my job so much easier. 
that's yeah i mean that that's cool that's awesome to hear seriously i mean but yeah, it was actually one of the questions I had later, later on here about 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 the back and forth there, <laughs> uh, there those kind of situations. And uh, I love, yeah, the, uh, your character was uh, like like with the ability that he had. I was like, wow, that's actually pretty nice. <laughs> nice to say, oh, yeah, looking him up and stuff. <laughs> and I know the fight scenes are gorgeous. I just haven't watched it. I don't you know. It just need to, yeah. You, I think like, well, I'm a, I'm a sucker for samurai. So some of my favorite series is like Kenshin oh, and yeah. like a uh, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer is definitely up there. The 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 fight scenes, especially when they're fighting the 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 with the Hashira versus the uh, the upper ten or the upper twelve or whatever, yeah, are just like insane. And and they're short because. The series isn't like I mean the series is already over technically the uh, yeah. the, the manga is already over but like these these fight scenes are very specific intricate and straight straight to the point and that's what I loved about it uh, uh, about it and the the colors the just the color and then the the elements that they do like the fire the water all these different kinds of elements just just beautifully drawn yeah or animated so, yeah, yeah you should definitely yeah you should definitely does great out. work. I like I uh-huh. I know it. I've I've seen them go ham on fate, you know. So oh, yeah. I, it's on my list. I just it, like Attack on Titans, another one I just never watched. Um, and now I feel like you know, it's sort of like I don't know. I somehow always miss the water cooler shows, you know. And then like you hit a point where you're just like, I I kind of want to just wait until this is over and done with, so that everybody has had their hype. So that I'm not stuck in that, because at least in the awkward conversation of like, um, hey, uh, yeah, I just haven't seen it. Okay, you just haven't seen it. People are going to pitch it to you, and you're going to be like, okay. But if you like are on like season one or whatever, people always do that thing where it's like, oh, ho, 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 just wait, and oh, yeah. like, how? Oh, shut up. You're that guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's like all of a sudden it's like, oh no, yeah, be that guy, I know it gets better. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, Attack of Titan. I mean, you might as well just wait. You have like the, the, there's a. I think they just announced the third part of the final season. So I mean, that's just a matter of twelve to you know. It, you can see the uh, the end of it. Yeah, Attack of Titan. Though I will say, has I have a love hate relationship with that one. But yeah, uh, I like, hear that it, a lot. Like, I hear that a lot. I, I again, I know nothing about it beyond like yeah. the first openings of Bob. That's that's about yeah. all I know that's what it is like the the first one comes in hard and then later on it's like eh, and then then just then it picks it, itself back up after some big reveals happen and then it's like okay cool but to say that it's one of my favorite i wouldn't say that i, okay. I think that's too much to say no i think it's fair. i think it, i think that you're in the exact moment like the uh, i totally agree where you're at with that with that series so it's like just see i got i got turned off attack on titan early and this is like the dumbest reason i like i i have to admit this fault this is like nothing to do with the show but it got announced the hype was real i was at uh sakura con because i lived in seattle at the time with some friends and we were at a bar down the street from the convention center uh it was a barcade and like Mm -hmm. this girl walks past this is before the series has dropped Right. She walks past and she's wearing a top that has no back and her entire back is the uh the like emblem of the 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 fighting force. Oh, th- yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. She's uh-huh. gotten that tattooed. Oh my god. On her full back. back tattoo? Yeah, full back. Oh my god. Tattoo. Jesus. Like full okay. yakuza style. And <laughs> I don't know why, but just that moment of like you haven't even seen this show yet and you've decided to dedicate this much real estate to it like I don't know. It just seems so insane to me. And like, I don't get me wrong. Like yeah. I'm planning on getting a berserk tattoo, but it's not going to take up my full fucking back. You know, a berserk tattoo is just a symbol. You got the symbol, right? Oh no. It's, what I, what I want is I want, uh, I want it to like, not a sleeve, but like, I want it to go from like my shoulder to like mid bicep. And I want a uh, void uh, huh? where he's holding up the, uh, the, the brand of the sacrifice with the eclipse in the background. Oh, wow. That like, sounds that's, awesome. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah. That's a, ha- yeah. Oh, half sleeve. Yeah. That's reasonable. I mean, but like a full, anything, well, ed- well to be honest with you, anything full back tattoo is a, it's a very gray area in my opinion. Like, yeah. Like that's the thing is like, 
you got to be real dedicated to take up that. Like if you get a <laughs> like if you just had the symbol on like your arm or whatever, it's like, yeah, fine, whatever. Like it, even if you end up hating it, like and, and that's the thing with like void is like, I assume if I want to actually like complete the half sleeve or whatever, I can just get stuff around it. You know, you can get a lot of people have bad tattoos. I don't want to <laughs> like pretend like, like, you know, this is not a secret, but like. I feel like big bad bad tattoos are like the ones you're gonna regret. The tiny bad tattoos that you're just like, yeah, all right, whatever, I got it. It's one of many. Or you see like the tramp stamp of something randomly. <laughs> it's like oh no, oh yeah. But the, the, I had a friend that had the uh, that used the uh, I don't know if you remember like Naruto had that weird seal on her stum on their stomach. Oh yeah, like so it, yeah. They I do I knew someone that actually had put that as a tattoo, as a full tattoo. Oh and I was like, See, that, like, was like what did they, you think that was a good idea when you saw that? If they <laughs> you know? love Naruto, like fair enough. <laughs> but like, if you haven't even seen the show yet, I'm just yeah. Like, that's where point. I just was like, I I don't know about this one, guys. And again, that has nothing to do with the show. That's not the show's fault. It's just a stupid thing that I was like, I. Mm. I think I'm going to miss this one. <laughs> okay. All right. And uh, like, uh, okay, but uh, uh, you have it like, I mean, you yourself, you know, I mean, like you have a very dynamic vocal range. Uh, like when I looked at all, like, you know, everything that you've done and stuff, uh, like I was like, I was like, wow, to, I, I thought that there were like, like a bigger person doing some of these characters like abigail from street fighter 5 like yeah. even your announcer from smash brothers 4 and ultimate series like very boisterous and stuff like yeah, yeah. was that something yeah was that something that you have always had or was this something that you improved throughout your 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 uh your overall career i don't know man like even when i was like 17 18 i was being told i didn't sound like a teenager so um and i mean like i'm a fairly big guy like i'm six two um mm-hmm. like I'm not going to say my weight, but uh, it's not like bad or anything, but it's it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, but like when I was doing the smash announcer, I was like, what? 170 pounds. Uh, and like 19, um, you were 19 when you did that. Yeah. I think I was 19 when we recorded that. I was either 19 or 20 when we recorded that. Um, and like, yeah, it's, I don't even know how to answer this, man. Like it's one of those things where like you play around with it, you figure out what, like the announcer is a combination of two people. There's Gary Owens, who was, you know, from beautiful downtown Burbank. It's laughing. And then, uh, for the more bombastic stuff, it's, uh, the, you know, the old, uh, Disney cartoons where like this pompous dude would like try to explain something. Oh, and then like Goofy the narrator would, of Goofy. Yeah. With a, yeah. The golfer is a consummate professional. Watch as he readies his stands with grace, poise, and don't know that. And you kind of just smash those two together and you get the announcer. It's got like oh, the uh, warmth of Gary Owens with the bigness of the of the Disney narrator. Oh, um, I mean that's pretty cool. And like that's kind of a trick voice because really, all it is <clears throat> when I when I don't have phlegm in my throat is opening up my throat as la- as large as I can and letting the voice resonate in my front resonators and my chest. And you know you can alter that slightly and get a very bad. Christopher Lee, you know, the hour <laughs> well, sounds- grows late, and Gandalf the Grey comes to Isengard, seeking my counsel. Um, God, dude, <laughs> that's freaking awesome! It's uh, you know, for some reason for a minute there, I kind of thought of a uh, a uh, 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 chocolate rain. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> <laughs> okay that sounds awesome all right well see i mean that's see but i mean like what you just did there like uh like i mean you have full control over your like that i mean the vocal uh, that is just insane and surreal to me man that's really cool like, i guess it, the but, only thing is as i get older my higher range is going um and mm-hmm. the thing is like i don't think i'm a particularly deep voice guy normally like i i think i'm fully like pretty firmly mid-range um but uh, my voice tends to have a little bit more texture on it. Like obviously not like, you know, Steve Bloom or John DiMaggio levels, but like enough where when I play younger characters, they still come up, you know, they still come out kind of raspy. Like uh, I did this, this thing where they're like, Hey, can you play this 16 year old? And I tried to do an impression of, have you ever seen cabin in the woods? 
Oh yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. the stoner kid from that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so he was very like, uh, guys, I think this is a very bad idea. Wow, man. That is just, uh, crazy man that's awesome and that uh, like i mean and to kind of like add to that though like i had no idea that you played both ali toto and toge inumaki in jujutsu kaisen in the dubs uh oh, as know. well what, in the movie what a fucking gift right oh my god no I, kidding like you you got you're literally playing two of the four in your own team in, in itself and then like you have and they're basically totally different spectrums of characters like i, I mean oh i love them both so much inumaki is just such a like i don't really play a lot of soft boys so that's nice i love inumaki and i mean he's he's pretty basic he's just slightly higher than my normal voice and he's you know he's a little bit shy so tuna um i also tend to play it like when shenanigans are coming or are happening with like panda and all them it's really like he's just over their shit at this point so just like "Ah, salmon row (laughs) <laughs> whereas like toto is a total fucking psychopath right like he's just <laughs> he's crazy yes. and i i love living in his brain like he's he's drinking his own kool-aid <laughs> my best friend i shall teach you the boogie woogie like what a what a what a weirdo i love him <laughs> <laughs> very much so but like uh like uh have you like if there are times when you have to interact with one another like like you know with both characters together with one another and uh uh does it feel weird kind of having that full-fledged conversation with yourself in two different like two different tones or or i mean i know you're no, not doing we, it back and forth but like yeah you know. we 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 record them separately so we'll do one pass as one character and then another pass as another so it doesn't feel weird i think it's mostly just like you're crossing your fingers that you're just like, okay, I hope people aren't familiar enough with my voice that they're going to be able to tell both are me and it's distracting. Um, but like the good news is it, most people uh, who consume this stuff, they don't know who we are, you know? Yeah, um, that's true. Which makes our job a lot easier because there's not that face to recognize every time. As long as you can keep the characters distinct, you'd be surprised how little you can change your voice and get away with it. You know, like as long as the really? characters mm. feel real and different, uh, people, you know, again, unless they're, you know, and some people do take notice of our work and, and know us by our voices and stuff. And that's very flattering and that's nice. Um, but you know, you have to assume that you're creating this for people who are just there for the story, not people who are there for you. Right. Um, no, and totally when you do that, uh, yeah, just as long as the acting is good and the characters feel different, people will usually not be able to tell. That's right. That's very good. Good. Well, uh, weird. So basically, the what you're basically saying, the trick is, is just say, just be different enough. <laughs> and then they'll be like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, understand where each character, like, obviously, Toto and Inumaki are coming from very, very different places. Uh, emotionally and the voice will always follow the character right like what are the demands of the character inumaki is obviously fairly soft-spoken he's um he's more on the i want friends but i don't really know how to have them when i can't communicate but somehow i've found this lovable group of of psychos and we were all gonna <laughs> you know just have a good time and you know uh, whereas Toto is just on a different planet, like a different mm-hmm. plane of existence. <laughs> His brain does not work normal and he's, <laughs> he's very outgoing and boisterous about it. And like, I love the line. And I, I was so glad I got to record after Adam who plays UG um, because we're doing the baseball game and Toto like takes a ball to the face and passes out. And Yuji just looks at him and he's like, wow, Toto everyone really does hate you <laughs> oh that's freaking hilarious <laughs> but uh like uh but i mean like uh, i definitely love yeah you definitely definitely doing a great job keep up the good work on that uh on that if there's oh, a season you so two much, or man man. thank yeah, you no problem man and i know that uh like and i know one of the characters too that uh i remember you playing was momoshiki in uh naruto and boruto oh uh, yes. series it's yes, a, and yes. he's a 
And what makes it is that he's like a he's just a nasty son of a bitch in my opinion. Like he's like the swarmy guy, you know? Like yeah. uh, uh <laughs> yeah. And he looks like I mean, but he just seems like a riot to play in general. Like, I mean, because he's he's smooth, soft talking, and he's the antagonist. So he basically roll goes on his own roles. Like, like, how was your experience playing like, like a character like that? Like well, did uh, like well, did you love it or was he just Awesome yeah, one. that sent me down a long road of like playing weird perverts for that director. Um, like they also brought me in. I did uh, another character. Well, I, I do Enogene in the show and in Boruto. And I also did a, an arc villain named, oh God, what was his name? Um, he had shark teeth. Uh, geez, I'm oh, Kasa- Kasami? Oh no, you said this is Boruto. Yeah, this is Boruto. Hold on. Let me, let me see if I can find this real quick because i don't want to mess that character up. opened up a web of, of creepers for you that's yeah that's no, I, this is like not a joke i uh let's see is he listed here ba, 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 ba. come on he's got shark teeth this can't be that hard to find he was like a water ninja and he was all like "Ooh." oh was he with like uh with sasuke's crew from shizumo was his name okay. okay and like he was creeping on this and you know for him he was a bit more yes we will bring back the bloody mist village um oh wow but he was creeping on uh this kagura you shall take your place as the kaze kage um, and that guy was played by Bryce Pappenbrook. And the first time I met Bryce, he's like, dude, you do a great job creeping on me. I was like, I'm sorry. What? I was like, in Boruto. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh my God. Okay, cool. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if that's the first interaction that you had with Bryce Pappenbrook. <laughs> he's, like, he's such a nice man. He's wonderful. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like it, I just got Momoshiki like started this like train of weird pervert characters who are just like <laughs> a little creepy and a little too touchy um uh-huh. but yeah momoshiki is fun uh it's you know it's always cathartic getting to you know i again actor in need of external validation constantly uh so like getting to play somebody who feels so superior to everybody else it's kind of it's kind of cathartic you know <laughs> just being feels oh good. you in Inferior creatures. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the thing. He always called them inferior creatures. And then like he gets so him and the dude from Demon Slayer. I don't know like if this is just like a trope in Japan or what, but they both they were both very upset when their cloaks were made dirty. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about the main dude from Demon the main bad guy from Demon Slayer? No, my dude in Demon Slayer. He kept oh, like yeah. he kept being like, You're kicking up dust. You're making my cloak dirty. And Momoshiki did the same thing. It was so weird. It is that wow, I didn't even really think about that comparison. You're totally right. Maybe they have an OC maybe they're OCD too on top. Well, I guess maybe. Momoshiki has to be OCD because he's wearing all white all the time, but still Yeah. He's also an alien and like I fell off the Naruto uh train. Like I it started when I was in middle school. I watched like up through the Sasuke retrieval arc from Shippuden, and then I just kinda, you know, I don't know, just sort of yeah, stopped. I- uh, so like when they booked me on Momoshiki, they were like trying to explain it. I was like, wait a second, they're aliens now. What? It's like, what the hell's going on? What? <laughs> like, oh man. Like, uh, so like, they're uh, alien I, ninjas. I, okay. I stopped at the, Dur- yeah, I stopped at the Jiraiya fight after, or no pain versus Naruto after the anime the, uh, with the animation. And I was like, okay, that was, that was a good place to stop. But then when they showed the end of like before, uh, the final fight of Sasuke and uh, and Naruto at the end of the Shippuden series. I was like, "What? Why was this like? Why is there so many dead people?" And they told me about this about the the this weird clan, and I was like, "What the? Heck? Where, where did this come from?" <laughs> yeah, it's it's fun though. It's it's you know, I mean, like when you grew up with something, it always feels rewarding to be a part of it, and just like this weird like. Man, 12-year-old Xander would have freaked the hell out if he knew this was in his future. 
Well, no, well, yeah, no kidding. Well, I mean, like, like hell, like what you were saying about Persona Five when you played the protagonist, you know. Which I can let me get a uh, nice segue to my next question. I will say this: uh, I would say, like, uh, as you know, you played Ren in the P Five games and the anime series and stuff. But in the game, most of the time, your character reflects like reflects the user's choices. So, like you said, it was it was very limited on your voice acting uh, uh, role in the uh, in the game itself. But however. You played more of a central role in the anime with Ren yeah. itself. Like, like, uh, like, how was like, like the transition from the game version to Ren in the anime version? Like, uh, like, what was there anything like? Was it easy to kind of give give him a true voice or, or like, wow. like how did that go for you? Yeah, no, I loved it. First of all, getting to say lines is always way more fun than just huh? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I should write something. Um, or persona <laughs> or persona. I kind of love that they do this. They did this in the persona Four anime too. And I kind of love it is they sort of make them like little shits, you know, like they're sort of like oblivious, but they always pick like the, the worst dialogue option. Uh, so <laughs> we got to really have fun with like, you know, like we got to let loose a little bit on that one and like embrace the comedy of it. And that was, that was a lot of fun for me is just playing the little moments. Like, uh, well, uh, <clears throat> I'm a dad, you know, it, <laughs> it was, it was good. I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. I always look forward to like, I think Joker does have a personality beyond being a blank slate. Um, but the personality uh, you have to have it come through at very specific times. Mm. And uh, I love the duality of him too. I love that when he's, you know, in Ren mode, he's, he's very shy. He's a little awkward. He doesn't really know that he can fit in. Um, But then when he's Joker, he sort of leaves that behind. And I think that's the really appealing part of his character is that like, once he becomes Joker, once he becomes a phantom thief, there's a confidence that he gains in that. And he's, he finds himself and his friends through that. So by the end, he is a much more complete person than when he came to town. And yeah, I, I just, I really, I could gush about these, these games <laughs> all day, man. Like, Man, like uh you know it's, it's funny uh my uh my girlfriend uh, was telling me like when i told her like i love like i love rpgs too and when i played it i was telling her about p5 and uh i was like you know one could argue that this game is about people hate like uh this game hates grown-ups so much <laughs> that they decided to go against the system completely you, you know it does but again i don't feel like it's ever cheap with it i feel like it's very it's focused on the exploitation that you sort of learn to like, that's the whole thing is like, we're changing Mm -hmm. people's hearts. We're, we're stripping away that layer of selfishness and jadedness that people accumulate over their life. Like I'm definitely much more of a grumpy asshole now than I was when I was, uh, you know, a teenager (laughs) and certainly more than, you know, like in my early twenties even. So Mm -hmm. like, it's just sort of, I think we do accumulate a lot of shit throughout our lives and it can, it doesn't always obviously, but it can um, make you very, you know, it can make you jaded. It can make you cynical. And then you see these people in positions of power who are exploitative of Mm -hmm. other people in one way or another, they're predatory. And it's really about, okay, we're, we get to we go in and we strip all that away from them and we make them confront how they've exploited us, how they've exploited yeah. the world. And I don't know. I, I think that just it's very resonant again. And they don't go cheap with it. They, they keep it honest. And I really admire mm-hmm. about that about those games. That's very, very true. Uh, th- th- like, uh, I forgot which, what, what was it in four? Was four uh, the midnight hour or like it was television, right? Like, four, yeah, four was the midnight hour television block where like you saw the shadows. And uh-huh. usually that would mean someone was going to get thrown into the TV and then they were going to die. So we had to go in and rescue them. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So, the, so, okay. So, the most of these personas, because I never played four, I have four, but I've never played four. Oh, I and, recommend uh, it highly. 
Oh really? Okay. So yeah, I, yeah, I need to I need to mess around with it because I got it on the Steam because I never had it on. The, I think it was only on Vita or whatever. Oh <laughs> and, yeah, uh, no. By the time I actually like found it and got it, I got lucky. My friend owned a copy, and like, it, I don't know what it just like it it definitely had a cult following but i don't mm-hmm. know that it ever like blew up the same way p5 i think it sort of set us up for success in that it was such a solid game and like p3 people love um mm-hmm. and then like so p4 had a little bit bigger of an audience and people and especially on the re-releases and stuff like that it just like grew and grew and grew and then when p5 hit it was like okay this is a thing mm-hmm. um so i think we really do owe the success we've had with P5 to the fact that the other games are fantastic and they really, they really set us up. They, they gave us the audience, you know? Right. And, uh, right. I'm incredibly grateful for that because I think it's an incredibly touching game and I'm, I'm very proud to have been a part of it and I'm happy that, you know, it's nice that people get to like, you know, almost every convention I go to people are like, this game changed my life. And that is incredibly powerful to hear. That's very much. I would tell. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> I'm being uh, very pretentious I, today. I'm not sure why. Forgive <laughs> me. Well, no, maybe it's just because of what we're talking about. It's possible. <laughs> you know, it may just get you open into it. But uh, like, uh, and like overall, though, throughout your like, I mean, your 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 voice acting career, is there any dream role that you are wanting to play? Like anything out there that you're that you've been wanting to play? Uh, uh, uh that you think would be perfect for that, that you think is perfect for you? Oh, well, I mentioned it before, but I would love to take a stab at the incredible Nightcrawler. Oh, yes. I just I I love love him so much. Like, the man role plays Errol Flynn movies in the danger room in his off hours, you know? Like, (laughs) he's Wolverine's, like, best friend and drinking buddy. You know a dude's Mm. cool when Wolverine's like, yeah, man, no, wait, you and me, we're buds. (laughs) That is true. God, I love X Men so much. Oh, yeah, I'm a big X Men nerd, like comic nerd. So, like, I definitely uh, no Nightcrawler is definitely up there for me. I think. Oh, the, yes, uh, the old love the fuzzy dude. Yes, <laughs> yeah, Psylocke's my number one though. I gotta go with Psylocke. <laughs> to Psylocke, uh, yeah, that's fair. You know, it, like that's the thing about X Men is like there's so many good choices. Like, it, I yeah. love Beast. I love. I love Wolverine. I love mm. Gambit when he's being written right. Like Magneto is, oh, just like Magneto. I love because I think Mag- I have to say Magneto is probably one of the best written villains I, of, of really of all time. In my oh, opinion, yeah, I would say he's the best. Well, I mean, the problem is because he's not really not a even, villain. Yeah, he's not really a villain. It's like <laughs> like the amount of times he's a good guy at this point equal the number of times he's been a bad guy, and it's never because yeah. he's malicious. It's just because he's, you know, and like we we kind of have to acknowledge at a certain point, like, hey, maybe Magneto was kind of right, you know, <laughs> like I, I'm not saying that you know it's good to kill people or anything, but mm-hmm. Xavier's been doing this since the 60s man yeah yeah and like they're still coming up with legislation to like talk <laughs> well, over mutants I, maybe at a certain point it's time to be like hmm you know what this this approach doesn't seem to be working hey magneto <laughs> you had a you had a couple ideas right <laughs> what was your idea of magneto it's like i thought you never asked but uh no the uh no uh, but like Charles, uh, it's so good of you to finally come around let's <laughs> fucking kill everybody <laughs> oh but that's basically that would be the plan b at this point say just accept that that mutant is the uh, being a mutant is the next evolutionary chain is, is through the level and just say okay got a retcon and everything but uh <laughs> I, I would i would say this though like i think that overall uh but like that's what really kind of got me into x-men was because of uh like that diversity issue which uh, I still, to this day, don't understand how they get the horrible past, but the Inhumans are perfectly fine. You know that oh, kind yeah, of yeah, right. It's like you live <laughs> in a world with literal, like, mythological gods and hulks <laughs> running around, and your biggest issue that you got to legislate is mutants. Words <laughs> it's like come on now, yes. But uh, I love that struggle, though. That struggle of like you know trying to trying to fit. Uh, the uh, have mutants fit in into regular culture, and then they've always they've always had the, it's always been an uphill battle. And then you have the internal oh, yeah. struggle, like you were saying with Magneto. Uh, you know, trying to say like his way, it's just a different point of view of what 
Xavier is. But what I love the most is that they that like people like Cyclops, even though I hate Cyclops, like changed his mind to follow Magneto eventually in the story, and he became kind of a bad like kind of like a badass when he kind of get, uh, when he when he did that, and he had his own crew to kind of spew like Magneto's uh thoughts <laughs> and stuff which is yeah really, i love i loved it all man <laughs> you know what I, like magneto would be the best supervillain in the marvel universe if dr doom didn't exist like i feel like it's, we have mm-hmm. to give it up like doom sets the gold standard just because like he knows exactly what he is mm-hmm. and he's fucking great at it like oh yeah darth vader is based on dr doom like you just i'm sorry you can't like oh He'd be cool to play <laughs> too, but I don't, I don't, I don't think I got the voice for Doom. You got to get the Latvian accent to the 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 Doom. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I, uh, my favorite version was uh, Simon Templeman did Doom, and he was, was that in um which, which series was that, that was in the F- Hulk cartoon, and I think for a little bit of the Fanta- I think season two of the Fantastic Four cartoon. I'd have to check. Oh wow! Um, okay, but yeah, he was just so like completely confident in himself it's so like there's no bluster there's no like i am doom and i shall destroy you there's none of that (laughs) he's just very like yeah man i'm just kind of better than everybody else Uh, he does carry himself to a to a standard that only doom sets to himself (laughs) oh yeah no john hickman had this great there was a spin-off of his fantastic four series i think it was just called ff if i remember correctly uh Mm-hmm. Um, and it focused more on like the Fantastic Four's kids, and like Doom has a very peculiar relationship with the the Reed with the Richards kids because it's like he's a supervillain, but he's also kind of Uncle Doom. Like it's sort of weird. <laughs> yeah. um, and there's like just this great moment where they're running between these two dimensions, and a bunch of like evil Celestials are coming after them, and like Celestials are the like uh, you guys have seen the MCU. Never mind. I don't have to explain what a celestial is anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. So like these celestials are coming after them, and like they need time to get away. So Doom's like, "All right, kids, you you go. You get through the gateway, and you close it behind you. You make sure these guys don't get back to our universe." And uh, Val, I think, is her name, if I'm remembering correctly. The Richards' yeah, daughter, right? It is uh, not. just like tugs on his cape and is like, "But Uncle Doom, I don't want you to die." Like. You can't, you, you, what makes you think you could survive this? And he just turns and he has this wonderful line where he goes, Oh, child, I am doom. What God dares to stand against me? And it's just <laughs> like, Oh, oh, you got to give it up for the fucking sack on this guy. <laughs> you totally right about that, man. One of my favorite like uh, quotes from him, it's not even from the comics, though, but, uh, but, uh, uh, but it was, uh, it was uh, from Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 because I was really big and competitive in that a long time ago. And yeah. like, if you beat do, if you beat someone with Doom, one of my favorite quotes was his when he says, the applause shall continue for an, a- another hour. The first to stop <laughs> clapping will be executed. <laughs> oh, I fucking love that. That's so good. I was like, that for some reason, that is the only quote that I remember out of the whole game. And I'm like, what okay, a, that is the a, best quote. What a beautiful bit of writing for Doom. I love that. He's <laughs> such a smug bastard. But again, he sets the gold standard. He was like really the does. first big villain. And he's continued to live up to that reputation. It's very true, and it's been like that for like sixty for since the sixties, man. Since found uh, Fantastic since Four number bla- back in time to find Blackbeard's <laughs> treasure. <laughs> it's such a Wasn't weird it, dude. What happened there? Wasn't it like the thing ended up turning out to be Blackbeard because of time? It, it was so stupid. I was just like, "What is going on?" Like that. That was like a that was a weird jab, <laughs> but it's but it's that, hilarious that he could do that. Yeah, like, like he that has the power and- to do that. That and the clone of Hitler, two like old Fantastic Four ones, I'm always going to remember because it's just like, wait, what? <laughs> it's like, why? <laughs> but why what? did you do this? Okay, there's a clone <laughs> of Hitler running around New York City. That no, is wait, so... at the time it was just, sorry, they retconned it to be a clone. Originally, it was just Hitler survived. And oh, was, that, was, 
That was the original Hitler? Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, that was original Hitler. Oh, my God. Jeez. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 60s was a was a weird time. 60s and 70s was a real weird time. <laughs> 60s were a weird time, man. <laughs> Xander, uh, Xander, uh, thank you so much for uh, stopping by. It was awesome talking to you and geeking out with you, man. It was really fun. Yeah, um, man. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Uh, before you go, uh, is uh, like, are there what are the upcoming events that you're going to be at? So, so people, so, so folks can probably stop by, swing by, say hello to you. Oh boy, Good. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I <laughs> think my next one is Acon in June. Um, oh, nice. So yeah, come by, say hi. Uh, I will be there. I don't know <laughs> what to expect. Uh, I've never done Acon, but I'm uh, I'm excited to learn. Acon, I'm actually yeah, I'm actually I live in Texas. I actually might go to that one then. <laughs> oh the sick! Well, I hope yeah. to see you there, man. Yeah, definitely uh, stop by, say hello. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no doubts. Uh, and you, I think you'll you'll have a good time. Acon is the biggest anime convention in Texas. I will say that. Oh wow. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So, hope- <laughs> I mean, I, listen. Uh, I'm yeah. I hope it'll be a good time. Sounds like it will. Good deal. Great, I'm great, great deal. To the food at the very least. Oh god! Oh, there's so many places, dude. <laughs> like, seriously, there's so many places. Like, like I can. Every suggest. time I go to the south, I'm like, okay, I just have to be okay with the fact that I'm coming back five pounds heavier. You know what's funny? Like, they don't even consider Texas to be the south. They call it the Midwest with Texas, and I'm like, why? Why do y'all have to be so anal about this? It, it is, is literally, literally south, <laughs> the most south you can get. Is yeah, it? it is it is uh, and every time when i say the south there people are already on me on it and it's like no it is the midwest i'm like i don't freaking care it is it's literally like, where I, it's at it's like i uh, guess that's technically true it is midwest but it's also <laughs> massive and i would say <laughs> firmly goes into the middle maybe even beyond and but it's also yeah like it's the most south you can be without leaving the united <laughs> states Oh uh, yeah, but folks, folks are always anyways. But it, it was cool. <laughs> but uh, guys, uh, but Xander, thank you so much for stopping by. And uh, if yeah, folks, man. if yeah, yeah, and folks, if you like to hear the awesome interviews like Xander Mobus, you can always check us out on our website confreaksgeeks.com to check out the whole slew of uh, uh of the pop culture gems podcast, or go to any podcast services out there like Apple, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, what have you. Uh, but uh, just definitely just give us a thumbs up, uh, like, comment, follow does go a long way for us so once again this is davis signing off y'all take it easy do it do it like and subscribe or i will hunt you down and make you regret it